All right, time now for the injury report with Dr. Kevin McHale. It's brought to you by Cape Regional Health System and Dr. Kevin McHale with Penn Orthopedics and Cape Regional. You get the best of both worlds for a healthier life. For an appointment, 609-463-CAPE or visit caperegional.com slash orthopedics. You know, the Eagles had to buy last week, and they are starting to get healthy. Finally, it feels like we were having injury upon injury upon injury to kind of talk about. We do have some more. We bring Dr. Kevin McHale to take a look at some of the injuries, some guys who may not play this week. Let's get some updates on that with Dr. Kevin McHale here on the Boardwalk on the Hotline. Doc, welcome back, man. How are you? We're doing all right. How are you guys doing? like to see the Eagles sitting on, on top of the division, whether it's a, a terrible division. It still is in the first place, so that's good. Feels good to be in first place no matter what, and uh, with the team getting healthy. So uh, some positive vibes finally there. Let's look at a couple guys, though, uh, who will not play this week likely, but could be some reinforcements. Let's start with Zach Ertz. He's expected to miss six weeks with that high ankle sprain, making the uh, you know the possibility he's been out since October the 18th. There's a possibility that he could play in Week 11. So that high ankle sprain, uh, we forgot about Ertz. He's been out it's seemingly about a month now, but uh, that high ankle sprain, six weeks. We feel that maybe we see him next week. You know, it's possible, but these high ankle sprains are difficult for these players to play through, and, and it's just one of those injuries that tend to linger. Uh, for whatever reason, this year we've seen a rash of these high ankle sprains across the NFL. A bunch of high name guys, high profile guys going down: McCaffrey, uh, Michael Thomas, uh, obviously for the Eagles, Zach Ertz, um, and we know Lane Johnson's and in, in battling through one as well. So with the high ankle sprain, as we talked about before, it's the injury to the ligaments that connect the two lower leg bones, your tibia and fibula, and because it's higher up in that area. It just causes so much more pain and lasts almost twice as long as a low ankle sprain, which is your classic, you know, roll on your ankle injury. Um, the timeline around four to six weeks is exactly that. Most people uh, fall in that window. We do see some people meet, beat that timeline. Uh, Saquon Barkley beat that timeline last year, was able to get back to play uh, around the three to four week time point. I forget exactly what, but he was able to play pretty well. But you could see his productivity picked up later on in the season as he got healthier and healthier. Uh, a lot of things do play a role in whether Ertz gets pressed back to try to see if he can beat that timeline. Number one, how well he's doing and how much pain goes down and the swelling subsides and how he's playing and feeling as he's trying to get back out to game shape. And also a lot of the other factors with the Eagles team, the fact that they're getting a lot of their um, play, you know, playmakers and pass catchers back out in the field, there may not be quite as much pressure to push him back onto the field a little early if he needs that extra time. So I don't necessarily expect to see him next week, but hopefully we see him on the field pretty soon. All right. Yeah. Remember he's been out since October the 18th and uh, you know, next week would be about a month. So uh, that would be on the uh, quick side of getting back. They were saying at least six weeks, there's an outside chance next week, but as doc said, probably a couple more weeks after that, we might update, uh, get an update on that next week. How about Lane Johnson? He was uh, listed as limited today. We know he had the ankle problem. Then he had the MCL sprain. He missed the game against the Giants. He missed uh, the Cowboy game. And then the bye week. So he's been out, uh, hasn't really played for about two full weeks. So with that MCL sprain and those ankle problems, would you think that he is ready to come back with that? You know, he's wearing the brace. We saw him at practice yesterday wearing the brace on that knee. You know, it's a little bit more difficult to predict these things when you have both, you know, joints bothering them. Uh, it, the classic timelines don't always fall in place because it's a little harder to accommodate for. It's bad enough to accommodate for one injury, you kind of make up for you know one joint bothering as opposed to two. But this MCL sprain might be a blessing in disguise for Lane Johnson. We know he's been battling through that ankle injury all season. He's been re-aggravating it multiple times. So maybe that extra two weeks gave that a chance to finally heal. And a grade one MCL sprain isn't overly concerning, only you know, just for, in and of itself. Uh, a grade one sprain means that the ligament uh, fibers are actually remain intact. They just get stretched and sore, and, and there's some um, damage there, but it's not completely torn, so the integrity is there. So as a result, it leads to pain and swelling, but typically players only miss about a week or two. When they get out to play in a brace, they have a lot of support from that. Sore might be a source of some pain and soreness, but it won't lead to a, a prolonged absence, as opposed to a grade two where there's a partial tear, a grade three where if there's a complete tear, it can lead to a much longer ac- absence. We saw in the NFL this year, Nick Chubb's about to come back. He missed about five weeks after having a much more severe MCL sprain. So you do see, um, even the same ligament, much longer absence from play. Uh, but after missing two weeks for a grade one MCL sprain, it's very likely that Lane Johnson might be able to get back out on the field. 
Um, hopefully that extra time did allow that ankle to kind of calm down and heal a little bit more. And uh, with that knee brace, hopefully as a support to get through uh, from that recent knee injury, and we see the old uh, Lane Johnson back out there for the Eagles. Yeah, that's one to keep an eye on. He was limited, so uh, we'll see if he's able to go. Let's go over the Giants this week, uh, who the Eagles are playing. They had some injury issues too. Uh, Sterling Shepard, he's limited at practice this week. The old turf toe. I love when you can give uh, our listeners a little insight on this because, you know, we don't see it all the time. But I remember being a kid and you'd hear a guy at turf toe thinking to yourself, come on, man, it's just a toe. Get out there. But how painful uh, is this? What exactly is turf toe? You know, so turf toe is an injury uh, to the ligaments on the bottom of the big toe joint where it meets the the rest of the foot there. And it's due to a hyperextension injury. That toe is kind of driven up in a way and it you can lose the tearing of that calf on the knee. Now, as you can imagine, every time you run, your toe extends and it kind of goes up uh, away from the foot. So every time a player is trying to run on that thing, it's like they're trying to re-tear that, that injury, that area that's healing. So it can be really uh, an annoying injury for these players. It can be very, very painful. Um, and even after they allow it to heal for a while, once they get back out to play, it can be uh, very easily re-aggravated. So it's a very, very frustrating injury. And, of course, when it's just your toe, um, you can't help but think, like, why aren't they out there? And, and you know, it's just a toe injury. But we saw this sideline um, really elite wide receivers in the past for long periods of time. A.J. Green missed a ton of time a couple years ago from turf toe. Devontae Adams missed several weeks from a turf toe last year. So this is something we do see um, because once they start trying to sprint and run on this, it can be very, very painful. Now, uh, Shepard obviously already missed a few games earlier this year, and he's back out there kind of struggling through it. Um, he's been pretty productive for the Giants. I'm not going to throw him out there with Devontae Adams and A.J. Green in his prime, but you know he has been productive for them and playing pretty well through this. So. At this point, if there's enough healing, he's just going to be playing through the pain and, and trying to be productive for his team. Yeah, that's one of those, uh, especially if you're a wide receiver, I guess, uh, you know, getting that uh, explosion off the ball. A.J. Green missed, what, almost the whole year with that injury last year. Yeah, yeah. In 2018, he missed, like, uh, I think it was like 68 games, and he ended up, it ended up being a season-ending injury for him eventually. I think he tried to get out and play, and then he ultimately had to – uh, do surgery and they lost the rest of the season. So it can be um, a pretty significant injury and really keep these guys out for a while. All right. Uh, the injury report, the Eagles getting healthy. I got to imagine, you know, you've worked, uh, you know, with, uh, with a professional football team in, in the injuries and when uh, your job's got to feel a lot better when these guys are starting to get healthy because, you know, we talk about every week, all these guys getting hurt and people like the fans look on the outside at the medical team, like, you know, blasting the, like it's your guy's fault that this stuff happens. Yeah, you know, it, a lot of times the medical team and the athletic training staff and everybody kind of takes the heat for this, but this is a really, really tough game for these guys. And, and what they're doing out there is just not natural. You know, the speeds that they're running, when you're on the sidelines watching these guys run, there is no way, it shouldn't be humanly possible for a guy that size to run that fast and make that quick of turns and accelerations. And when you see it and the, the violent collisions that these guys are making, you're like, okay, well, no wonder why there's these injuries. No matter how much training you do uh, to try to prevent them, they're going to occur. So these guys are putting their bodies on the line, and it is nice to finally see them get out there because you want to see them be able to perform at their best. They're working really, really hard to be on the field for their teams. All right. Uh, today's injury report brought to you by Cape Regional Health System and Dr. Kevin McHale with Penn Orthopedics, the best of both worlds for a healthier life. An appointment you can call 609-463-CAPE or online at caperegional.com slash orthopedics. Let's hope we get another healthy week here for the birds. Down the stretch they come. Can they stay healthy? We shall find out. Doc, appreciate it. Uh, no problem. Looking forward to another big win. Let's right, hope. Let's stay, on, stay in the first lot there. Let's hope. Let's hope and put this uh, Giants team out of their misery.